Hello, my sob friends. Today, it's a little damp, dreary, dark spring day. It's to be expected. It is Ohio. But I was taking my pup here for a walk, and now she's obviously tuckered out. But when I was on that walk, I got to thinking there's no way, no way, shape, or form I'm going to be rolling around on the asphalt outside that's damp, cold, and doing a hot how-to or modification video. There's, there's just no way. But when I was thinking, I was like, what can I do to be of some help to some potential sob owners that you're thinking about buying one, to current sob owners, to heck, even sob enthusiasts? What are some of the resources available that you may not actually know? So obviously there's the Amazon, there's eBay, there's Craigslist, probably the top three that most people refer to when buying auto parts. Now, Saab, it's a little bit different. Obviously, the manufacturer hasn't been around for a number of years. I want to say it's been since like 2011. So if you're planning on purchasing a Saab, you may be leery and don't want to pull the trigger on buying one because you don't know what parts are available. Well, in this video, I'm going to dig a little bit into that and show you what resources are available. And heck, even if you're a Saab enthusiast, you probably don't even know some of the resources on this list. Before I get right into it, I would like to say I do appreciate you guys watching, clicking on this video. Um, I do try to be as helpful as possible, so um, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, by all means, bring them up. But uh, I would like to say thank you for watching, and uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So without further ado, let's dig into this list. Number one on my list is SobArchive.net. Now, number one, it's not number one as far as the best resource out there. It's just as far as number one, the first one that I'm going to go into on my list. And why I think it's important to note is that it deals with anything and everything factory wheels. They don't limit themselves as far as specific models, like just 9.3s. No, it goes into 900, 9,000, 9395s multiple different Saab models, and they show you the photos of things, they give you a basic description, the wheel dimensions, the rim size, the width of the wheel, offset, the wheel bolt pattern, some part numbers, and then most of them have a description, you know, rare. Um, and then what's even really cool is that it has a center cap part number, at least on most of them. That way, say you have one of these rare wheels, you can just look up, hey, I have this wheel, silver spoke, I need a cap for it, boom, there you go, look up that. So that way you're not just limiting yourself to looking up silver spoke sob wheel, center cap, and you may never even find it, but you part, punch in that part number and you're set to go. But how I actually I found this website was the fact that on my 07 anniversary Saab 93, I hit a pothole that demolished the wheel and I needed another one. And instead of just like looking up and finding anything useful under that make and model, because there's numerous different wheels available, as you can see, I was able to go on here, type in, hey, my wheel is this ALU 66, and be able to find it that way. That actually wasn't the wheel, it was, I believe, yeah, this one, the ALU 71 on the 60th anniversary, that's what I had, the 17 by 75. But I was able to look up this website, punch in that part number, and find the replacement rim that I needed. So. It's very helpful as far as a wheel resource. And then even you can look up, hey, I got this 9.5. I saw a 9.3 with a really cool wheel on it. Is it a factory wheel? Look it up on here. Is it going to work on my car? Look up the offset, look up the bolt pattern, and go from there. So it's very, very helpful. You know, if you have a Turbo X, it's a little bit easier because you can typically look up like a Turbo X wheel because it's, you know, clearly a, like a more rare model. But you can even look up an ALU 77 and it should be able to pull up results quicker. Um, the Carlson version had the same style but a 19. If you're interested in that, you'll probably never be able to find those for sale. But, you know, you can at least look it up and um, should be able to get you to where you need to go. So a lot of very cool things on here. And even like it goes into some of the Hirsch stuff. I don't think you really get a part number. See, I don't know if that's the part number for the wheel cap or the whole rim, but you can look it up that way. I mean, a lot of cool things. And I didn't even know that Saab made a lot of these wheels. Like I've seen the turbine, but I didn't realize there's different variations of them. But there you go. Very cool stuff and goes into the older stuff as well. So that's number one, SaabArchive.net.
Number two on my list is a combination of four separate websites. Those being GenuineSob.com, TheSobSite.com, EuroParts.com, and lastly, eSobParts.com. Now, I will have all of these links in the description so you can go and find them yourself. So why I have four is because you like to have your options open for finding parts, but also these are the top four that throughout the years that I've found and are super helpful. So my favorite is this one right here, eSobParts.com. Now, all of them will be similar to where you have a drill down, you select, you know, 08, Sob 93, Aero, 2.8 engine, you know, gearbox, auto, or manual, and you can go through and find what you need. Now, right here is one of the parts that I needed that took me a while to find, believe it or not, and it's this little stupid spring for the clutch up here, and I do have a video uh, actually on how to replace that, and it's really not that difficult, but finding the part was tricky, and... That was before I even knew what esopparts.com was or even any of these other sites. But all of them are very similar and will get you pretty much the exact same thing to where you can find fluids, which is super helpful because you're not going to really be able to go to a Chevy dealership and tell them, I got this 08 Saab, what fluid I need. They're going to scratch their head and say, you know what, probably go pound salt, go buy a brand new Corvette, and then we can help you out. So it's just a lot easier to go on one of these four websites and figure out what you need. And what's really cool is they have exploded diagrams to where you can look up, you can click on it, and then you can get specific part numbers. And heck, you can even take these specific part numbers that you get if you're not comfortable with purchasing directly on their website and go to someplace like eBay and buy it off there. But even cooler is that eSob parts, they're actually on eBay as well. So I don't know if you can do the drill down to where you can select like 08 Saab 93, search for parts, but I know if you just click on them, you can search within what parts they have available. So one thing to note though is, let me go back to their website, is on here this part is 529 where you punch in this part number and then you go on eBay. Well, this same exact part is probably going to be 8 or $9. And why that is, is because on eBay, they list everything free shipping, whereas on their website, it's this price plus the shipping. So for me, it's actually a bit easier just to go on their, their store, I should say, within eBay and buy it there because I have all my credentials saved. And sometimes I'm kind of weird about putting my credit card information in a new site. Um, even within this day and age, I mean, a lot of people can get your information. So I like the familiarity with having everything set up on eBay, but it's pretty cool that sites like eSaw Parts, they're also on eBay. So these four sites are great for getting brand new saw parts. And honestly, I don't know if they have body parts available, but as far as like mechanical stuff, they have just about everything you need. Something to note too, this key fob, you can get on eBay and you're probably gonna find a cheap alternative that'll be 20 or $30, half the price of this one. But let me tell you right now, somebody that has a Tech 2 and can program these, do not get the eBay ones. They aren't the right frequency and you will waste your time, waste your money on it. Go to some place like E-Euro e Parts, E-Saw Parts, Genuine Saw, something like that. Buy the real deal. Buy the genuine saw part. That way it'll make your life a lot easier and then the person's life programming it so much easier because you're not going to be wasting people's time because you get the OE part from the beginning. Number three on my list of resources out of all things is actually rockauto.com. So this one, more than likely you've seen the commercials and know an idea of it. But believe it or not, they have a pretty decent selection of Saab parts. Now, why I did not combine this with the other ones that I just listed, like Genuine Saab, the Saab site, E-Euro parts, and E-Saab parts is because these sites right here deal everything with original equipment, the OEM, the Genuine Saab parts. Whereas rockauto.com, it's a great aftermarket auto parts solution so they're not more than likely going to have the original equipment but they will have a great kind of cost effective alternative to that but you need to be leery of what you buy from this i definitely recommend going with an original equipment part but um, there is some things that you can use from here so for example you have a sob and the fog light goes out so go on here 
put in my 0893 and go to electrical and go to fog lights and there you go so i wouldn't necessarily recommend buying it from here because the thing is you know it is cheap say for this wagner it's 475 but you have shipping on top of that and it may take up to a week to get so if it's something like a headlight you're going to want to replace it now so I would use this resource as far as getting the part number. Use it as a system of checks and balances. Get the part number. Say, okay, I need a fog light. I looked it up on here. I need an H8 bulb. You can go to your local parts store, have them look it up, and just double check. Because time and time again, I've gone to a parts store and they look up the entirely wrong thing. They don't even know what a sob is. And they sell you the wrong thing and you go to change it and it's not right. It's frustrating for everybody. So go on here, you know, see that you have an H8. Go to, you don't even have to go to a parts store. Even Walmart has bulbs. Go there, buy it, get it, and go on with your merry little day. Number four on my list is this car-part.com website. And the other ones, they're great for buying brand new parts. But say you want a fender, you don't want to pay top price for it being brand new and it's something that you can find used because if you buy it new more than likely you have to paint it anyways well here you might be able to find one already pre-painted in your color you just look up what you need so you know right now 2008 Saab 93 select your part go with fender you can select part grade price you know year so I guess we'll go by distance zip code search and what's cool too you can even search by VIN, what side fender, and here we go. So it shows you the closest all the way to the farthest away, or if you search by price, least to most. Um, there is a lot of information that's typically missing from these, uh, which can be somewhat frustrating, but you can actually go over here and just call this uh, junkyard um, clearly they don't have a number listed but you can just click on this and it'll give you more information but uh, as far as photos goes if you're looking for something specific like a radio well the photos that they usually list aren't helpful whatsoever they'll be like one or two uh, but it's, if, if it's like a fender like this one it is relatively useful because you know what color it is at least um, and another thing to note is like the part grades there's a wide range that I'll show you, but basically like this one, it's a part grade A. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and uh, it'll show you one or less units of damage. Well, it doesn't tell you what the damage is, so that's why it's useful to just call them as well. Is it a dent? Is it a scratch? To me, that makes a big difference, uh, but it goes down to B, C, and um, you know, different things right here. And sometimes it shows you like a range of how long to repair said unit. But this is a very helpful resource when finding used parts and they have anything and everything imaginable and say you search something that's super unique and that's not on here, you can actually like save it to where whenever that part does become available, you will get notified. So that's a pretty cool resource. Um, like here's one for example, you're looking up a fender and they have a photo of a wheel and tire. Like what kind of use is that? So this one can be frustrating, but at least you can always call them and figure out more specifics. So the next one on my list, number five, is row52.com. So going right into digging a little bit deeper as far as finding used factory parts, this is a great resource when finding cars that are in junkyards local to you. So here we'll search for a vehicle, Obviously, it's going to be a sob, so once it loads, very simple, punch and sob. Any kind of models you can search, doesn't necessarily mean you'll find one, but you can search. 93, we'll punch in zip code within 50 miles, and search. And here you go. So local to me in Columbus, I have these three right here. Um, this one doesn't have a photo. These two obviously do. But a thing to note is that 
the photo right here that you see was added on March 8th. The photo right here on March 14th. So this doesn't mean that's what the car currently looks like. More than likely, this being almost a month out, this car is pretty well dismantled. But we'll click on it. Let me show you the information that they give you. And it's few and far between, but at least you can kind of tell a color. It's pretty impossible. So if you're looking for this fender, judging by the damage, the bumper's popped out, but the fender's probably okay. But you really can't get much information from just this one photo because, of course, there's no other photos. Uh, there's not much of a description other than the engine, the transmission. It does say it's blue. Well, there's probably four or five different variations of blue for this particular model. So, I mean, it can be tough to narrow down. But it is useful as far as finding cars and junk cars local to you. Um, it's not something that you'll want to call and ask them if they still have a radio available because more than likely you'll just be wasting their time. It's just easier to go there physically and see what they have. But just know that there's not a lot of photos that they usually throw on here. But this actually, I use this resource all the time in conjunction with number six on the list. And let me show you why. So number six on the list in my absolute favorite site that I found that probably most Saab owners, enthusiasts, even Saab people in general don't know about is the SaabSite.com and their VIN search function. So going back to number five, this car right here. So on my car, I was looking for a navigation unit, and clearly from this photo, there's nothing interior-wise, so I don't know if it has navigation or a standard radio. I'm pressed for time. I don't necessarily want to go there and see if they have it. Um, what you can do is take the VIN number. We'll copy it. Go back to the Saab site here, and we will do a VIN search. It will tell you everything and anything imaginable. So this actually, this VIN isn't to this particular car. Um, this is actually to another car I was looking at, but I figured the information on this one is a little more useful. But uh, it tells you everything. The basics as far as the model year. This, it gets you more specifics. Look at that. Now instead of just like... If it was listed as gray, now it's Titan Gray Metallic, and you even have the paint code. So if you're looking for that specific code fender, bam, there you go. Leather, there's not a photo of the interior. Well, on here it tells you. This one is obsidian black, the parchment accents, the, so that's like the typical aero kind of style. Uh, engine, transmission, and then if you click on additional details, it shows you so many different things. So here you can tell this car, for the VIN number I'm searching, is all-wheel drive. Some other cool things. Um, it's got power outside mirrors, but they're manual full. That's how they all were in the United States. But uh, it's kind of neat. The European cars, they actually had an option to where it was a uh, power fold. But uh, kind of digress there. But here, being an all-wheel drive, there was an option for the carbon fiber interior as far as like the accents above like the glove box and little accents uh, around the shifter and the door panels and stuff. So this one actually has that. So that's really, really cool. It has the 11 speakers. Well, this one is without navigation. So right off the rip, I knew it wasn't what I was looking for. But there's other options that are pretty cool. It uh, has the typical Bose six-disc CD changer. This one has parking assistance, so that's the sensors on the back. Rain sensors, sunroof, which is pretty typical. Bluetooth. So Bluetooth was a thing that wasn't in the United States until 2009 to 2011. This one being the 2.8 liter and also an all-wheel drive. It does get the high output. I don't know. I, I want to say it's like 280 horsepower, same as the Turbo X. One thing here that's super helpful, there's different options as far as window regulators, if your car has anti-pinch protection or not. 
here it does show this particular car does and anti-pinch protection is basically not only does it have auto down function but it has auto up as well and if you need to replace that that is very important because there's two different regulators so <clears throat> get your part number or excuse me get your VIN number punch it in here and that will tell you whether you have anti-pinch protection or not and you can replace the window regulator right the first time it even talks about the emblems I mean it is crazy how many different things that this drills down to and it's so cool I tells you the wheels even in here it tells you the ALU rim and you can go back to the number one resource right here and look for the ALU and see hey this car has this rim on it if I ever need to replace it that's what it is so it's really pretty sweet all the information and I'm pretty sure I bypassed it but I even talked about it's got the home link with the auto dim rear view mirror I mean there's a lot of good information here and another thing too that's useful is it has the VIN plate placard right here which is super helpful um, because you can actually get brake codes the BC and CC um, that all actually denotes to something and actually let me show you number seven which uh, goes in conjunction with this so number seven on the list is actually just this information right here so I will have this in the description and actually number eight will be where I pull this information from but for sake of things this number the VIN plate is pulled from the car right when you open up the driver's side door this is on the body of the car not the door but the body of the car and you have the VIN number and then this series of numbers now if it's an extra wheel X wheel drive car the cross wheel drive these will somewhat be blank because cross wheel drive has specifics to it but on this website the sob site it lists everything right here as far as the VIN plate codes and going back to this well why is that useful is because of this information right here if you ever need to change your brakes you go to a parts store or you look it up on eeuroparts.com one of those websites you need to know what size you have if it's 285 302 314 345 millimeter all of those are different sizes and one will not work with the other so on this particular car it is the cross wheel drive AA we don't have it AB we don't have AC we have AC is 314 millimeter rotors so right off the bat if you have to replace the front rotors that's where you get that information now BC again it is a cross wheel drive it's 292 millimeter going back to this right here note how it's blank because again the cross wheel drive it's a given that it only has one option X wheel drive cross wheel drive only the other two AC that's the front the front rotors BC that's the second the rear rotor CC that's the front caliper and then DB is the rear caliper as far as inches goes that's not the size of the rotor because 314 doesn't equate to 16 inches I believe that is in reference to the size of the wheels I'm not entirely sure um, somebody actually might be able to kind of talk further about that because actually now that I think about it the cross wheel drive had 17 inch wheels on it um, so I'm not really sure what that's about but um, I never really had to replace a caliper on one of these so I don't know I've had to replace the rotors and this is how I access that information um, now if you're wondering the biggest rotor on here is the 345 millimeter on the front that is turbo x only it's turbo x specific so i imagine you can put the turbo x ones on these others but it will entail the caliper the bracket also the rotor is probably not worth the time but uh yeah turbo x had some pretty massive rotors on it so that's pretty cool now where I got this information from is one of my favorite sources outside of this website right here and it's one that I frequent quite often and that is number eight on the list and that is a forum called sobcentral.com or heck even any forum now this day and age we're really big on Facebook big on 
you know, instant gratification and satisfaction. So Facebook, you can post a photo, limited information, and kind of ooh and ah over it. Where the forums, it's kind of a dying breed where it's a lot of information in one place. And it's kind of a library for Saab. And Saab Central I've used for a number of years, and I've done a number of videos with information pulled from this forum. And you can see here the number of models that they go over. And let me show you real quick. Just a couple different uh, groupings they have. You know, audio, visual, tech two. This is exactly the information that I pulled to make my tech two video of setup. I mean, there's such great information. Granted, there is inaccurate things, but fortunately, there's more accurate than non. Um, I mean, it is just phenomenal the amount of stuff that is on here, and it, it blows my mind. And they have what's called stickies, kind of the most relevant information and um, cool things like say you want to throw on aftermarket wheels on your car, you can click on this sticky here. That's just a bunch of people showing different aftermarket options on their sobs. You can look at different sizes. Hey, is 19s going to fit on my car? Is it going to look ridiculous? In here, there's people that put 19s, 20s, chrome, black, Plasti Dip, anything you can possibly imagine it's a wealth of knowledge. It's a library for Saab. So with that being said, that concludes my list. Woken from her slumber. It's still really rainy and gross out though. Anyways, I hope this video of my eight resources has been of some form of help and something that you did not know before because whenever you purchase a vehicle, you buy into a manufacturer that no longer produces any cars whatsoever. It can be super difficult and stressful to find any parts or it may just shy you away from buying a vehicle in the first place from them. But uh, hopefully this video helped and show you that it's really not impossible to find parts for a manufacturer that's no longer around. And uh, the support group is awesome. It's great. There's one other thing I would like to mention is the fact that YouTube, there's plenty of great uh, channels out there that, um, you know, I'm not just promoting my own. There is some other ones out there. I know off the top of my head, there's that auto autopsy. Uh, he goes more into specifics as, as far as like models like the Carlson and the Turbo X. There's one that's um, the Saab Doctor. He goes more kind of like into my videos where it's like actually changing parts. Um, and of course mine that I have a whole slew of different how-tos and other random Saab bits. So YouTube is very popular and helpful because obviously, you know, not only is, you know, not only are you looking up information, but you're visually seeing it as the person's doing it. So it's super helpful. Um, so if you have anything to add, if you have any websites or any information that you would think would be helpful to other Saab enthusiasts, by all means, comment down below and share. Because uh, I guess sharing is caring, right? At least that's what they teach you when you're a kid. Um, anyways, I do appreciate you watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions. And uh, we'll catch you next time when it's a nice sunny day out and we can go back to modifying Saabs. Catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Been talking and begging, I'm older. What you want to be?